going on guys kimchi cowboy here um, we're going out to the range <clears throat> we're going to the one a little bit closer it's called eagle peak uh, they have an outdoor range for a rifle that goes from 25 50 100 200 300 the only issue with them is they don't allow fmj on their range so you guys have to either use hollow points or uh, boat tail hollow points that's for rifle only for pistol you can use fmj but we're going to go out there and zero my scope I noticed when I was at uh, Copperhead, roughly about 90 yards, it was pretty off. So going to go zero it again with some bow tail haul points uh, that I guys showed you in the, the ammo bulk buy nine mil, cheap, cheap nine mil ammo. I usually zero, like I zero this last scope at um, 50 yards. It was nice and sunny and you guys know Texas, the weather here can change on a on a dime so now it's actually raining but it's actually a light drizzle now it was it was a torrential downpour to begin with so we'll see how it is there's also the there's zero wind it seems like the wind picked up a little bit but humidity is probably about like 60 70 percent outside uh, that all plays a factor but i think for 50 yards we should be okay and yeah i'll see you guys when we get to the range i brought the rifle it's just just chilling in the backpack with the folding stock. Uh, I don't want to bring a whole gun bag and bring the whole Pelican case, so just bringing it in the backpack. I have about 80 rounds of ammo. Hopefully that'll be enough. And this guy has no clue where he's driving, but I'll see you guys when we get to the range. So this one is a little bit, but it's not too bad. So do we get the gas washer in the Did you put a gas in If you just like slowly squeeze the trigger, uh, Did you put a gas in If you pull no. it, then it's an adjustable gas block. Yeah. On AR. Okay. Then you, right. Can you adjust it from the outside? So all we're need, yeah, all we're need to do, no. So when you pull it, and then that one, and then that's the all pause, just to review it. Um, and this is the magazine. So I have one that's just for you, but it's not mine. What's wrong with that? Yeah, because we, you haven't got my scope, so... Yeah, because you already felt the
All right, we're back from the range. What I really like about this is I can just throw everything in the backpack, like I said before, and it just makes traveling much easier. No big range bag, no duffel, anything like that. Let's go ahead and look at the targets real quick. So, sorry, I'm filming this on the GoPro instead of the nice camera. Um, just because all the range footage was on this, decided to keep it like it. Okay, so here was the 50 yards. What happened was these were the first three shots, as you can see, incredibly low. Moved it up, fired two shots, moved it up again, just one, again, one. I think in between these clicks, there were about maybe 40, 40 rotations. And then moved it up a significant amount. I want to say almost close to 20 clicks. We shot about three to four rounds. Shot another four rounds right here after a couple clicks up. As we we're getting closer, I dialed it to the right. As you can see that shot right there. We dialed it up more, which happened here. Then we dialed it a little to the right and up, which was this. And then we shot too high. And then I dialed it back, which I didn't shoot any, and I should have. But I wanted to get onto the 100 round before um, the ceasefire happened. So, yeah, I know, because I dialed it back into doing here, that most more than likely I'll be shooting in that white at 50 yards. And then we went ahead and shot to 100. One thing it's hard about this place, timing, is because it's about a 40-minute drive, 30 to 40-minute drive. You get about 20 minutes to shoot, and then there's about a 10-minute ceasefire. So... I didn't want to spend too much time, so I did rush a little bit, but this is what happened. So, this is 100 yards. This is about a... Six and a half inch circle. Middle circle is almost three inches. Just about three inches. Um, 100 yards, like I said before. Now, on the optic itself, it has like a chevron. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this primary arms optic, but that's what it looks like. So you have a little bit of a chevron, you got some holdovers. Now this is what their holds are. At the tip of the chevron is 100, bottom of the chevron two, Top of the red line, three, four, five, six. So of course I had to change that. So, actually let me show you. So for the first, I'm saying so a lot. These first couple shots up here, this grouping right here, was aiming at the tip of the chevron in the middle circle. So those five shots, a couple shots were there with the middle tip of the middle, or the top of the tip this part the tip of the chevron dead center on the circle next a couple shots down here was when i put this circle at the bottom of the chevron the bottom of the chevron and that's what resulted in here <clears throat> and then when i placed this red dot between the middle two lines right here like so the chevron covered completely up the circle this is what happens and resulted in those shots. And then these ones off to the side, I was messing around with the mile per hour holdovers just to see what it would look like, playing with it up and down, and that's what these four shots are. So if I wanna hit 100 yards dead center, I need to be holding where the tip, the chevron is basically covering the targets. So not the tip, not the bottom, but the entire chevron itself is covering the target. Now, if I want to shoot 200, I basically just put the tip of the chevron right on here. And that's where this will go, because 50 and 200 are about the same. So, oh my god, I'm saying so many times. This is what happens, and the result. Like I said, I was kind of on a time crunch, and I didn't want to stay there too long. But if you guys enjoyed that video, go ahead and hit a like, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.